Lady Gaga was recently on Oprah Winfrey's show and she kind of had a bad take on the current state of mental health care. And while she did make a good point, this conversation is a little bit more nuanced and we need to have a discussion about it so we can hopefully have some reform in the United States and that way you can get the mental health care that you need. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're not yet, follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. All right. So I was, uh, I was informed about this subject from uh, the video from YouTube's resident doctor, Dr. Mike. All right, and Lady Gaga was recently on Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Mike made a video about this because Lady Gaga said, by the way, if your primary care doctor is prescribing you an antidepressant, this should not be happening. Primary care doctors should be introducing you to a psychiatrist, an expert in brain medication. All right, so I will link Dr. Mike's video down below. He makes some excellent points and I highly, highly recommend that you go check it out. All right, so I'm gonna be discussing, you know, some of my own personal experience, both, you know, just from my life and my struggles with mental health and getting prescribed mental health medications, but also working at a drug and alcohol rehab where I had to help clients kind of navigate the mental health care system after leaving treatment. All right, so the first thing we need to talk about when it comes to Lady Gaga, when it comes to celebrities, when it comes to YouTubers, is something called appearance bias. All right, so, Appearance bias is this bias we have where if somebody is, you know, attractive or wealthy, like they're rich and they're famous, we're like, hmm, this person must know what they're talking about, right? This is one of the reasons why people have an issue with like celebrities endorsing candidates and everything like that, right? Um, we need to just be mindful of this. Just because somebody has a lot of money or a lot of, you know, uh, success in their realm, it doesn't necessarily mean they know about the topic that they're discussing. So just always be skeptical of that stuff. Hell, even me, even my videos, be skeptical. Do your own research, fact check it, double check it, whatever you gotta do, all right? So let's talk about this. Like, I will start out by saying that I absolutely agree with part of what Lady Gaga is saying. Like, we have a massive problem in the United States with over-prescribing and over-diagnosing people. Like, it isn't uncommon for you to go see a primary care doctor and they're like, oh, you have problems with your attention? Here's some Adderall. Oh, you get anxious? Take some Xanax. Oh, you have a little ache and pain? Here's a prescription opioid. You know what I mean? So. That is something that we have to be mindful of. And I think Dr. Mike is really good about talking about, you know, turning to medications, especially mental health medications, as a last resort rather than a first resort. Also as a side note, not every patient with anxiety and depression needs antidepressants. And in fact, that's the beauty of family medicine. We understand that cognitive behavioral therapy, DBT, all these options work very well for our patients. And because we have existing relationships with these patients, because we're their primary care providers, we treat them for years, we know what works. We know what medications they do well with. They have direct access to us. And it only makes sense that we continue this line of treatment until it passes that complexity line where we do need to get a specialist like a psychiatrist involved. Like Dr. Mike seems like the type of doctor where if you saw him and you were going through a difficult time and you wanted depressants, he would try to guide you on the path of, you know, building some resilience. You know what I mean? But we do have to be mindful of it when it comes to, uh, you know, primary care doctors or even psychiatrists over prescribing medications. I am very passionate about that subject because I am a recovering prescription drug addict. I used to go around to doctor shop and easily get medications to fuel my addiction. You know what I mean? So it's something that I, I think about a lot. So one book that I highly recommend is the book called Saving Normal, all right? It's written by the guy who was actually the head of uh, the DSM-IV. 
and he really does a great job discussing how we're over prescribing a lot of medications and we're over diagnosing people, right? And how the DSM isn't always the best tool to use to uh, uh, diagnose somebody. You know what I mean? For example, when he talks about depression, something that was eliminated from the DSM was if, if you just experienced the loss of a loved one, right? That is now not a factor in the DSM when it comes to diagnosing depression, right? So if you lose, you know, someone close to you, right? Uh, a, a parent, a significant other, a child. Basically it says, if you've been depressed for over two weeks, you have clinical depression. But it's like, how long are you allowed to be depressed about the loss of a loved one? Okay, so let's talk about uh, psychiatry, okay? So by the way, if you are confused about the difference between like psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, counselors, and all that, this is actually Katie Morton's book. So Katie Morton is like the therapist of YouTube. She does an excellent job in her book discussing the differences between those. So psychiatrists are medical doctors and they are there to prescribe medications. But here's the thing, they're not magicians. All right, like they are trained in psychiatric medications. And if you have the resources to go to a psychiatrist, go ahead and do it. But like I was reading somewhere that the average visit with a psychiatrist is like 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Like how much can you really get done in 15 minutes? Like sometimes it takes us longer than 15 minutes to figure out what we're gonna order off the menu at a restaurant. So it typically takes longer than that to diagnose somebody. So with what Lady Gaga is saying, like sometimes, you know, it's not too much different than what primary care doctors are doing. So real quick, based on my experience, so my, uh, my primary care doctor, she prescribes my medications, but, but she is a very, very good primary care doctor. Like she will not even attempt to prescribe me certain medications. She's like, listen, if this doesn't work, we need to get you to a psychiatrist, right? Like she is very humble about what she knows about and what she doesn't know about. You know what I mean? And I appreciate that about her. But here's one of the issues when it comes to psychiatry, and I'll just give you a quick little anecdote here. Working at the Drug and Alcohol Treatment Center, part of what I did was I would follow up with clients after they left, and we would always send them off with a refill of their prescriptions and an aftercare plan and all of that stuff, right? And sometimes, the person wouldn't refill their prescriptions or they wouldn't follow up with the aftercare plan. Like we had case managers who would set them an appointment with a psychiatrist, you know what I mean? And the person would miss that appointment. And here's something that we need to take into consideration is for your first psychiatrist visit, like sometimes it can take like a month to get in there. This is from dealing with thousands of clients who told me like, Chris, I ran out of my medications. I called the psychiatrist because I missed my appointment and it's gonna take a month to get in there. So this is where we need to lean on primary care doctors and just pray to the gods that they are accepting what they don't know about mental health meds and also while we're trusting what they do know. You know what I mean? Um, like, but I always recommend that you do your own research on mental health meds. Like, I'm iffy about like, you know, asking others like, what was your experience with this medication? All of us are different. We can all react differently to different mental health medications. For example, for most of, you know, the last mm, six years, seven years or so, uh, I was on Lexapro, but I know so many people who had a really bad side effect from Lexapro. You know what I mean? So if you ask me about my experience with Lexapro, it was awesome. If you ask somebody else, it was terrible. So just be mindful when you're asking about other people's experience. So the main thing I wanted to talk about here is the current state of mental health care in the United States. So again, when we see celebrities talking about this stuff, we need to be cautious, all right? Because there are tens of millions of uninsured Americans in the United States. For most of the last year, I was uninsured, right? And this is something that millions and millions and millions of Americans are struggling with. And a psychiatrist visit is far more expensive 
than a primary care doctor. So when I see Lady Gaga talk about this stuff, I'm like, yeah, but everybody's not a millionaire. Not everybody can get into a psychiatrist immediately. Not everybody can afford a psychiatrist. Sometimes you can't even afford a primary care doctor visit. You know what I mean? So it's important to know what you're working with and then see who you can see. So I highly recommend if you have no insurance at all and you're broke, like check out your state. All right. You can call, um, I believe you can call 411 and ask them like, Hey, are there any, you know, government funded clinics here? Right? So there are a lot of government funded mental health clinics where you can go in there, you can talk to a therapist. Sometimes they have psychiatrists there. Sometimes they have doctors who you could talk to. Right. And then like, if you have Medicaid or something like that, they can prescribe you these medications. So like I said, when I started this video, it's much more nuanced than just saying, don't let your primary care doctor prescribe you medications because sometimes that is your best option. So one thing I want to talk about before I let you go is in Dr. Mike's video, he discussed the dangers of self-diagnosis and absolutely, please, for the love of God, never diagnose yourself, right? And I think Dr. Mike was just on a roll when he was talking, like I get into when I talk and he mentioned self-help books, right? So like I said, never diagnose yourself. But again, with so many people who are without insurance, for so many people who are broke, sometimes books are your best option to start working on your mental health. For example, Katie Morton, licensed therapist, wrote a book, okay? This book, by the way, is more helping you understand therapy than methods that you can use to help yourself. But man, books are cheap, right? You can go to your library. Um, there are many websites where they sell thrift books. And some of the top psychologists in the world are putting all of their knowledge into books. You know what I mean? So like me, I am very fortunate to have a full-time job and have health insurance and everything like that. Like I, you know, I get my prescriptions refilled. I actually got to go refill them today. I have a therapist, you know, but I still read a ton of books and I'm constantly learning about new coping skills and everything like that. So I do think that self-help books are extremely, extremely beneficial to people who don't have the financial means to go see doctors, psychiatrists, and all that stuff. Like once you get on your feet, do it, but never use a self-help book to diagnose yourself. But from what I've seen, like, and I've read so many books, like in the last year, I'm almost at about a hundred books, most of them on psychology and mental health and everything. I, I can't think of any of them that I've read that's like, hey, this is how you know that you have clinical depression. None of them say that. Most of them are just like, hey, depressed people, this helps them. Anxious people, this helps them. Um, you can find the people who are like the, the leading researchers in um, things like trauma and borderline personality disorder and all sorts of other disorders and they have tools in there. So what we need to understand about therapy is I highly recommend you get therapy if you can afford therapy because therapists are there to help you open up, get down to the root of your issue. We always need somebody that we can talk to about these things. And therapists are also there to keep you on the right path. Like it, when you're on the road to your mental health recovery, it is easy to just start veering off the road. All right. And following up with a therapist can help you get back on track and stay on track, right? Because a lot of us, we don't wanna put in the work, like looking at yourself, self-reflection, going into your past, these are things we don't wanna do. So it's easy to just boop, take off. So a therapist keeps you on track. But, but if you can't afford a therapist, you have to have some personal accountability and just recognize that there are so, so, so many tools out there that can help you, all right? so. I want to end with this. I do think Lady Gaga's heart is in the right place. She has been very open about her traumas that she's been through. She is an advocate for mental health and everything. But I just think we always need to remember that some of these celebrities, and I don't think she has bad intentions in any way, shape or form, but some of these celebrities, they lose touch 
of what it used to be like when Lady Gaga was like that starving artist, like playing the piano at small New York clubs. Like she needs to recognize like a majority of people are in that financial status. You know what I mean? So when making these statements, we always need to take those people into consideration. You know, I have worked with far too many people who don't have insurance or lose their insurance and we need to be aware of the resources that are out there. All right, but anyways, down in the description below, please, as soon as you're done with this video, go check out the Dr. Mike video. It is phenomenal. All right, but that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And I wanna send out a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who buys my mental health books over at therewiredsoul.com. That helps support the channel as well, as well as everybody who gets your hand on some mental health merch from the Rewired Soul store. All right, you're all awesome. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.